I came here because I'm such a believer in the AI revolution and where everything is going over the coming years in terms of robotics, autonomous, bots, social media, human proof. I am a core believer at the heart in in what world and world coin and what you know Sam and Alex and what the team have done. So this is much more of an AI tech play, in my opinion, than, than, than a core crypto play. I believe this is, I want to, along with the team, play a role in driving the vision, driving the awareness of the orb, driving the awareness of world, driving the awareness of human proof in terms of what I view is really going to be the core layer when it comes to true authentication in this new AI world. That's that's why I'm doing this. That's why I'm so excited to, to be part of it. What if your desk warned you before your retirement got wiped out? Unless you buy this product, your retirement account could be destroyed overnight. Get yours now from the link down below because the supply is limited to just a hundred pieces. We'll, 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 we'll see. And, and, and I'm sure there's a Sim I, I, I tried the Simpson quote from Ralph Wiggum. Maybe there's something related to, to NVIDIA in China. Who knows? But I Stacey, quickly, what is the next moving market moving event for NVIDIA stock? What's the next major thing that you are following? Yeah, I, I mean, so you've got earnings and, and everything else. I mean, they just reported earnings not that long ago. Um, what we're really looking for, at least for, for this year, I guess is two things. One is the the magnitude and trajectory of their rack shipments as they ramp their Black Ball Ultra, their GB300 parts into the end of the year and next year. Um, look, we're also waiting to see if, if some of these licensing and other issues around their ability to do business in China do lease because, again, they have zeroed it out from their numbers. So anything they get from China in the near to medium term is upside. And I guess as you go forward, they've got their uh, GTC event, which will be in March of next year. It's not that long, you know, six months from now. Um, we will probably get a lot more color on their next generation product, which is called Ruben, which is supposed to ramp in the second half of next year. So we'll probably learn a lot about that in the first half of 2026 when they have that event. God, we're already talking about 2026. We're, we're almost there. We're almost God, there. What do you mean we're almost there? Summer 2025 <laughs> is not even over. Technically. Yeah, September. Uh, oh, my goodness. We're, time is... Time, as they say, is flying. Stay the AI volleyball game continues to see huge multi-billion dollar spikes going back and forth, back and forth. NVIDIA serving the latest money ball right into CoreWeave's hands in the form of a multi-year promise to pay CoreWeave $6.3 billion for any unsold cloud computing capacity it has. Yeah, leftovers. Anything you don't have, we will buy, says NVIDIA. The previously undisclosed deal was actually struck more than two years ago. CoreWeave shares spiking 7%. We're about to tell you why NVIDIA's had a bit of a struggle at this hour and throughout the session staying in the green. In a rather robotic announcement by the Chinese government, China's state administration for market regulation said today that an initial inquiry has found NVIDIA violated Beijing's anti-monopoly laws. That's it. No additional information. That's all they said. It could be a setback for CEO Jensen Wong, seen here in July, meeting reporters in Beijing, playing the role of diplomats, signing autographs right after the U.S. approved the resumption of sales for his H-20 AI chips to China. But now China suddenly is all, oh, wait, you guys are anti-monopolistic. And while NVIDIA tells FBN it complies with the law in all respects and will cooperate with all governments regarding competition and export laws, China's timing of this announcement and accusation is a bit of an eyebrow raiser, considering Treasury Secretary Scott Besant currently in Madrid, leading the U.S. trade delegation in a new round of trade talks with the Chinese. Liz, NVIDIA, Beijing says the company violated the Chinese government's conditional approval of its 2020 acquisition of Mellanox Technologies. China didn't announce a punishment, but it says it will keep investigating. These accusations now casting doubt as to whether NVIDIA will be able to sell its H-20 chips to China, which you mentioned the Trump administration approved back in July. 
now we don't know if China even wants those exports. So the plot thickens. Liz? Yeah. So again, and AMD kind of got the same deal. They were allowed to sell, at least get the licenses to sell their chips. AMD is moving higher by 1.6 percent. You know, as time has gone on, we've learned more about where we're at um, in the AI adoption cycle. And I know there's been some questions about that, particularly relative to NVIDIA and whether we're at peak or not. Um, I don't think that we are. Unfortunately, NVIDIA is caught up in this geopolitical uh, um, mess between the U.S. and China. Uh, but I do think that their technology will prevail. They still have the best technology out there, and there still is a ton of demand, um, in, including from areas definitely outside of the U.S. with sovereign nations and others that are st still building out their infrastructure. So I still think there's a great growth story there. Um, how about um, NVIDIA? You want to give us a thought on NVIDIA today? So NVIDIA is interesting because what we're seeing is some developments regarding its RTX 6000D, which is the first China China card initially designed to fill the void left by the banned and then unbanned NVIDIA H2, H20s, which has reportedly now received relatively low interest in China, according to some reports we got from Reuters who cited these really ongoing trade tensions. So estimates by JP Morgan and Morgan Stanley have suggested now that NVIDIA may be on track to produce between around one and a half to two million of these GPUs by the end of this year, potentially leaving it sitting on a huge stack of these unwanted cards. So the specific array of GPUs that NVIDIA is allowed to sell to China at this point has fluctuated wildly in this year, of course, as we've seen Trump really initiate the on-again, off-again tariffs and trade blockages, particularly in those re in relation to their high-end, most advanced compute GPUs, which are aimed at these AI tradings and inferences. But to comply with these regulations, NVIDIA has churned out Chinese-specific GPUs like the RTX 6000D, as well as the H20, and other models like RTX 5090D. But the latest developments in the space are more focused on the 6000D card, which right now, again, according to one outlet, is being met with more of a tepid response. That was, again, initially designed to really fill this void, but it's been interesting to see as this is the latest development from NVIDIA in this space, yes, but it was reportedly designed, again, to fill a ban on another chip. So we'll have to see what right now NVIDIA has been talking up its B30A as a major replacement for its Blackwell architecture. But right now, the GPU design, I think, that's finding the favorability will be interesting because we are seeing competition flood the space. I mean, we've talked about Baidu, Alibaba right now, cutting out NVIDIA in China to produce their own chips. It will be very curious to see how NVIDIA fares in that given region, especially because their guidance didn't necessarily include Chinese sales, sure, but also there was the expectation of they could reach a resolution, and that was a huge reason analysts were optimistic. So they have to figure out a proper way to distribute within that country, but competition is definitely not letting up anytime soon. Good morning, Nicole. And yes, seeing some news really tied to its relationship with TikTok, as right now, according to various sources, many are believing Oracle could be playing this key role in a TikTok deal between the Trump administration as well as China. So Oracle's among the consortium of firms that could be enabling TikTok to then continue its operations in the U.S. If a framework deal between the United States and China is finalized, again, according to these various sources who then gave this information to CBS News. But the precise structure of the final deal was under, was still pretty unclear, at least as of yesterday evening, but it will include multiple companies, according to these sources. It's not necessarily, though, clear the level of involvement that we'll see from Chinese firms, including, of course, the current parent company of TikTok being ByteDance. But right now, who will have control over some of these algorithms? And I mean, TikTok has been really deemed one of the most powerful is definitely going to be of note when we hear from President Xi and President Trump on speaking on Friday. So attempts to reach Oracle executives and a White House spokesperson have been unsuccessful, so we haven't really gotten confirmation from Oracle or the White House. But the commercial terms have been apparently agreed upon, according to the Treasury Secretary Scott Bassett, who did say that on Monday in Spain. So these are following his meetings with, of course, Chinese officials on a wide-ranging issues. But all that to be said, I do think that the TikTok deal 
is one that will be closely watched because we've sort of kicked this can down the road and finally hopefully putting some clarity on this deal and its ownership, at least as of Friday. We'll have to obviously see how that shapes up, but they're, we're expected to have more of an answer by at least Friday. All right. I mean, look, when, you, when we heard there was a deal, um, fundamentals were in. The speculation began it would be Oracle because it was Oracle last time. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, Oracle has the pockets, has the connections. Not surprised to mm -hmm. see this.